Welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm Betty Chen. China recently held its two sessions where Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi sharply criticized the United States during a press conference attended by Chinese and international journalists. Wang Yi says U.S. sanctions on China have reached bewildering absurdity, and he also warned that nations supporting Taiwan's independence are playing with fire and will suffer the consequences. Given the intensity of China's language, how will the U.S. respond? Joining us today are Yuan Yi, National Zhengzhou University Institute of International Relations Adjunct Research Fellow, and Li Wen, Democratic Progressive Party Department of International Affairs Director. A warm welcome to both of you on the show. China recently concluded its two sessions, meaning the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and the National People's Congress, a week-long event that drew international focus. Highlighting the sessions, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi delivered particularly pointed remarks aimed at the United States. Let's now take a look. Mei so let's start with today's conversation. How would we interpret Wang Yi's remarks and also as mentioned by him saying that there are some bewildering absurdity from the U.S. to China? Are there any examples or do you think that these are really absurd accusations, Professor Yen? Probably one will have to revisit what has been agreed upon uh, by uh, Xi Jinping and Biden last uh, December, November in San Francisco. Well, the, uh, uh, the United States, Biden, President Biden, emphasized during, during which time that the United States will continue to take necessary action to prevent advanced U.S. technology from being used to undermining the U.S. own national interest without unduly limiting trade and investment, which is suggest, right? That's exactly what the United States has uh, said in front of uh, uh, Xi Jinping mm -hmm. then. So this is, a, uh, this is a revisit of the statement that, that, that President Biden made uh, to Xi Jinping. And yet, I would argue that probably would, uh, we, we would have to you know, look at the uh, entire episode of its entirety, which means the, of the 90 minutes uh, uh, press conference uh, and what the remark uh, uh, Wang Yi made only constitute a very, very uh, small portion of the entire remarks. Right. He answered altogether 21 uh, questions, all right, 90 minutes. And this is a part. On the other hand, he also admitted what has been accomplished and achieved by both sides of uh, U.S. and China right. being agreed upon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's your view on this, Director Li? Well, the two sessions for China is a very important yearly annual event uh, that allows a glimpse into China's relatively closed off political system. And uh, many observers have commented that uh, the work reports for the two sessions this year have relatively focused more on building confidence for China's domestic ec economy, including giving assurances about uh, the annual economic growth rate, etc. cetera. Um, however, Foreign Minister Wang Yi's comments um, made some pretty sharp, uh, uh, sharp remarks um, directed towards uh, the, the U.S. and other countries, uh, seemingly placing, attempting to place blame on the U.S. on a multiple of issues. When we look at his comments, uh, in particular the comments about the U.S. sanctions towards China, it seems to indicate anxiety on the part of China um, about China's um, technological industries and how they might be impacted by the U.S. sanctions, especially the recent sanctions that limit the export of chips uh, mm -hmm. to the Ch Chinese industries. Um, uh, when we look at the broader comments um, during Wang Yi's uh, press conference, we can see that it actually displays a wolf warrior mentality in a broader scope, including comments directed at 
the EU, including comments directed at uh, issues related, related to the South China Sea. Uh, for example, asking other countries from outside of the region to steer clear of uh, issues related to the South China Sea, or pushing back against um, so-called labels that other con the, the EU has referred to when talking about China, um, denying that China is a strategic rival or a competitor for the EU. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we see that there, it's a general pushback and a, a general uh, wolf warrior mentality that the foreign minister's comments display. Mm -hmm. The BBC interprets Wang Yi's remarks as a response to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's statement at the Munich Security Conference. In the current international system, if you're not at a table, you are on the menu. The Taiwan Strait security emerged as a key issue during the press conference, Wang Yi said. So based on Wang Yi's comment, what kind of message does he want to send to the world? Professor Yan. Wang Yi's response actually was the uh, response to the question raised by Xinhua mm -hmm. not by BBC. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you for Since the clarification. BBC's reporter was not, uh, was not uh, selected to raise any question at all. Okay. So the, uh, I think uh, what Wang Yi, the message that China wants to convey, uh, include the United States also to the uh, other countries, suggest, uh, uh, invites two important elements according to Wang Yi, one is uh, seeking for an equal, orderly, multi multipolar world and an inclusive economic globalization. So the, uh, what he meant by multipolarization, uh, multipolarization of equity uh, is to embody the equality of rights, opportunity, and the rules of all countries, and it is no longer possible to allow the few or small number of a big country to monopolize international affair, it is no longer allowed to divide economic uh, countries into three, six, nine, or so on the basis of position of strength. It is no, no longer allowed to have the final say of, uh, on whoever has the biggest first. Okay, and and still less can be allowed uh, be allowed that some countries must be on the table and some countries can be only on the menu. Mm -hmm. I think this is the very uh, general background for, right. for what uh, uh, Huang Yi has, mm -hmm. uh, has uh, stated. That is uh, uh, the aiming to the, uh, uh, the, the ultimate goal to envision the inclusive economic globalization as well as the orderly um, multipolar world order. Mm -hmm. What about you, Director Lee? What's your take on the overall message that Wang Yi tries to um, convey to the world, talking about, say, playing with fire and like Taiwan independence, all kind of issues? What's your view on this? I think Wang Yi's remarks were partly made in response to the overwhelming support for Taiwan mm -hmm. from uh, many countries among the international community. This includes uh, recently We've seen President Biden's State of the Union address, which stated clearly um, standing up for peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait, mm -hmm. as well as uh, some groundbreaking resolutions passed by the European Parliament recently about uh, denouncing Taiwan, uh, denouncing China's intention to use force in the Taiwan Strait, mm -hmm. and classifying or, or characterizing. Uh, Taiwan and China as neither side being subordinate to each other, as well as pointing out that the only uh, representative of Taiwan internationally is the uh, democratically elected government of Taiwan. So these remarks are very important, and Wang Yi's comments might have been in response mm -hmm. to these remarks that mm -hmm. publicly declare support for Taiwan right. in a very clear way, in a very outspoken way. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but just to add to um, uh, just to add to uh, the, the, the the discussions about Secretary uh, Blinken's uh, remarks, I don't think they were necessarily directed at China. Okay. They might have been uh, discussing 
uh, domestic debates within the United States or Europe about the importance of multilateralism mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, um, participating in international uh, dialogue and talks. Uh, just one last comment about Wang Yi's uh, remarks about Taiwanese independence. Uh, it's clear that the, for, the, for President Tsai Ing-wen's administration over the past eight years, the, the, the primary objective for policy is to maintain the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. And the Taiwanese understand our responsibility in maintaining regional stability mm -hmm. and security in the region. Mm -hmm. And that our president, as well as the recently elected uh, Vice President Lai ching have repeatedly stated that uh, Taiwan is already a functionally independent country mm -hmm. and that there is no need for a separate declaration of mm -hmm. independence. I think the message has been clear that maintaining the status quo is the primary objective. Mm -hmm. So talking about maintaining status quo in Taiwan, how do you think that the overall Taiwanese people would perceive Wang Yi's remark when he talks about peaceful reunification with China? Well, a lot of China's comments seem to be in den denial for the long term. Mm -hmm. um, China has been in, in denial about the existence of the ROC, about Taiwan being uh, enjoying a sovereign government about Taiwan having its own military and its own government and its own currency and a vibrant civil society as well. Mm -hmm. So when we look at China's recent actions, uh, coming back to the recent um, unfortunate incident that happened in Jinmen, right. where uh, a Chinese uh, speedboat capsized mm -hmm. after being chased by Taiwanese Coast Guards. Mm -hmm. um, it is definitely regrettable that two deaths occurred for, right. from the incident. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think anyone wants to see this unfortunate accident being used as an excuse or a pretext right. for China to raise uh, tensions in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, we have seen escalatory actions conducted from the PRC side, mm -hmm. including um, including Chinese Coast Guard ships entering the restricted waters around mm -hmm. Jinmen or the Chinese Coast Guard inspecting a Taiwanese a tourist ship, mm -hmm. tourist boat around mm -hmm. Jinmen. And these are events that we do not wish to see happen in the region as they could right. raise tensions. Mm -hmm. So I think um, people want this, uh, want this incident to be resolved in a peaceful way and that we've seen restraint on when we look at remarks from the Taiwanese Coast Guard mm -hmm. and our uh, executive branch as well. Mm -hmm. So going back to the remarks made by Wang Yi regarding peaceful unification, how do you think that the Taiwanese society has, uh, has viewed that, Professor I think the overall, what has been said time again uh, by all the Chinese uh, officials, including Wang Yi, Minister Wang Yi, are repetitive, right? They're talking about the same line already too long. But the, uh, so the overall reaction, I guess, from the Taiwanese audience would be the, you know, here comes it again. Mm -hmm. but, but here is uh, something new. Mm -hmm. I think at, at the conference, Wang Yi, let me quote, Please. he said he believed that sooner or later, uh, you would see a family photo of the international community abiding by one China principle, and it is only a matter of time. This is a, a, a new message. Right. Uh, uh, and also, it did send a very, very uh, stern warning mm -hmm. uh, with our, uh, you know, with, with our, uh, you know, uh, foreign al allies mm -hmm. number decreased. Right. So that posed a, 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 a daunting challenge right. for for Taiwan's uh, national well-being and also mm -hmm. for the well-being of the of his citizens yes. should this happen. Right. Thank you for pointing this out. During the annual two sessions, the foreign ministers and the premier's press conferences are notably significant to the international community. However, this year marks a departure from a 30-year tradition as China cancelled the premier's press conference and declared that it will no longer be conducted in the future. 
So State Council Premier Li Qiang holds the position of the second highest ranking official in China, directly below President Xi Jinping. Could you please tell us a bit more about the roles and responsibilities of the Premier and President of China? And um, what's the importance of the cancelled press conference that should be held by the Premier, Professor Yuan? Well, according to the Constitution of the Constitution of the uh, CPC, in the past uh, there is a, a clear uh, divisions of labor amongst the uh, uh, collective political leadership of the the the, the uh, seven Politburo standing member. So the uh, uh, they share this uh, collective uh, uh, political uh, leadership, uh, but. Up to now, I think this is a clear demarcation of mm -hmm. the, what has been agreed upon and what has been practiced for the last 42 years uh, face a, a, a new uh, challenges. Uh, the, separation, the separation of the, uh, the power is no longer true. Uh, up to now, I think the, uh, uh, Xi Jinping dictated turns and also uh, becomes the collective uh, political leadership has evolved into individual political leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the cancellation of this uh, uh, um, customary honor practice suggests that the uh, uh, no longer true for what has been practiced in the past indicate, indicated that the concentration power and the uh, uh, concentration of power by one um, figure mm -hmm. uh, uh, prevails. And, and also uh, the cancellation of this uh, 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 press uh, conference also uh, uh, conference also uh, convey a message that is uh, uh, that is uh, there is a uh, um, stratification also uh, hierarchical structure power in, imposed within mm -hmm. the uh, Politburo. Mm -hmm. The premier is no longer able to play the role it has been described in the past. Mm -hmm. So right. this is a, a new reality, and mm -hmm. also this is new. Uh, uh, indication of uh, 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 of the individual political leadership under Xi Jinping himself. Mm -hmm. So, Director Li, do you agree that the cancellation of the Premier's press conference is actually equivalent to a more concentration of power by Xi Jinping? Yes, um, I must echo Professor Yuan Yi's comments here. Uh, we're seeing an uh, increasing, increasingly concentrated uh, degree of power. Uh, concentrated within the hands of one single mm -hmm. individual, that is mm -hmm. uh, President Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the premier of the state council is an extremely important position as it heads all the ministries and the executive branch. Um, however, with the cancellation of the premier's press conference, you can see that uh, the importance of the premier's opinions and uh, his own his own opportunities to communicate with the public mm -hmm. have diminished. Mm -hmm. And in the past, although China's political system is, has, has been really opaque, um, the premier's press conference has allowed us to have the opportunity to take a glimpse into uh, what China's political leaders mm -hmm. uh, are thinking about. Uh, for example, uh, former Premier Li Keqiang uh, made comments about 600 million people in China uh, only earning a wage of less than RMB 1,000 mm -hmm. uh, 1, RMB a month. So uh, these comments were, were made, these important comments, which sparked many media discussions, were made during these uh, premier's mm -hmm. uh, press conferences. And it seems like uh, now we have this window of opportunity closed off to the outside world. But again, uh, when you look at President Xi Jinping's track record, it's probably no surprise that he's changing a lot of the traditions long held within the Chinese Communist mm -hmm. Party system. Talking about changing traditions, traditionally, the Chinese Communist Party would convene the third plenary session centered on economic issues before the two sessions to prepare the meeting's agenda. However, in an unprecedented move this year, the third plenary session was not held, marking a first in China's history. So what's the function of the third plenary session and an influence on the two sessions? Well, in the history of the CPC, the Chinese Communist Party, I think the one 
uh, would be able to recognize the importance of uh, such a plenary starting from the 11th uh, CPC Central Committee uh, was held on, uh, on December 18th uh, in 1978. I think the, uh, the, that, that served as the first wave of the using the third plenary session of the CCP. Uh, to, to make a historical direction, the shift is emphasized on the work uh, uh, of the party and the country to a more economic con construction and carry out reform and opening up. So it served as the benchmark for a reform, economic development of the past. And also it served as a symbol of the CPC to reestablish the, uh, the ideological, political, and organization line of uh, as, a, as a party line. Uh, um, so this uh, plenary session served as a, profound, as a profound and significant transition in the history of the CPC since the funding and also and, and has in, uh, since embarked upon the great journey of reform and opening it up. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so one could easily identify the significant uh, uh, so, uh, uh, importance. But solely, there's a clear div divisions of labor when it comes to the, the first and second uh, uh, session, which focus on the uh, uh, political uh, issue. They uh, put this uh, uh, third, uh, the function of the third uh, plenary so, uh, for for economic development. Mm -hmm. I think economic matters the most. Mm -hmm. So uh, by uh, waiving uh, this economic session, their mm -hmm. their argument be made whether this is violate the the bylaw of a CPC, mm -hmm. which which in theory is not okay. necessarily because they have already convened a two session already mm -hmm. and also. In particular, the last year, I think the, uh, especially the latter part of the uh, uh, last year, uh, uh, Xi Jinping traveled extensively overseas. So probably uh, uh, for, for not being able to, you know, uh, find a, a proper time. Mm -hmm. And then last uh, expo explanation suggests uh, this is simply because uh, they are running out of a, a proper uh, proposal. To deal with, to mm -hmm. deal with this uh, 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 economic uh, uh, issues, mm -hmm. all in all, the cancellation made it uh, first, uh, you know, first uh, gesture uh, for 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 years to come. Mm -hmm. Director Lee, how do you see the cancellation of this important third plenary session? Well, again, it's probably not that much of a surprise for. Uh, the current Chinese leader Xi Jinping to break with tradition mm -hmm. within the Chinese Communist Party institutions. He's the boss, right? Yeah. And uh, we must remember that he even canceled the term limits uh, so that he could right. secure a third consecutive term as the party's paramount leader. Um, so when we look at uh, the cancellation, or, or not the cancellation, when we look at the fact that the third plenum has not been, been held right. uh, before the, this year's two sessions, it's, it's something that is different from the past, but again, something that uh, not entirely unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, given that the third plenum is an important meeting uh, within Chinese Communist Party's traditions to uh, announce important um, policies, if Xi Jinping feels that his team is not ready to mm -hmm. announce the major policy decisions, or if they're waiting for an economic upturn mm -hmm. uh, for China's uh, struggling economy, then they might postpone mm -hmm. this meeting for a number of reasons. Right. Talking about China's economy, during the two sessions, Premier Li Qiang mentioned that China tries to maintain a 5% GDP growth. Do you think that China can really achieve that, Director Li? Um, China's economy is definitely struggling. Uh, foreign as investment is going down. Uh, the total number for foreign in investment has decreased by a lot. And uh, youth employment has been high since uh, for a number of, number of years, especially during the pandemic. And uh, people have noticed that during uh, last year's uh, statistics, um, a lot, the, the youth employment has skyrocketed to over 20% mm -hmm. to the extent that China stopped releasing numbers or figures mm -hmm. for youth unemployment. Um, over the, the second half of last year. 
uh, early this year, China released uh, new figures for youth unemployment. It was at around 14 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. Um, in this year's two sessions, they released another figure, which stated that urban employment um, mm -hmm. has uh, un urban unemployment has dropped to around five percent. Mm -hmm. But but these these figures are sometimes lacking in transparency, and mm -hmm. it is extremely difficult to assess the true uh, the 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 true the true conditions of China's economy at mm -hmm. the moment. So, Professor Yin, the growth rate by Chinese government uh, somewhat close to what INF has indicated. Mm -hmm. According to the INF uh, forecaster, uh, it would be somewhat uh, roughly close to 4.2, so a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. but, the, uh, 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 but one has also, you know, uh, taking into account uh, the overall comprehensive tackling of the issue. Right. Right. Uh, one has to admit it that the uh, the the Changsa government report did cover the negative and the positive side, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, and also uh, the five ministers, including the uh, Develop and Reform, um, you know, um, Commission um, minister, uh, uh, made also uh, some explanation right. uh, at the uh, another conference, right. uh, another press conference. And he, he used the term that the uh, focus on high quality development and consolidated and enhanced the positive trend of a economic recovery, uh, 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 you know. So uh, what they offer, other than a number, mm -hmm. very, very philosophical right. handling <laughs> of the issue. Right. That is to uh, expose the both sides of a coin. Right. one has to take into account. Thank you very much. If you like our show, please search for us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching our show today. Stay safe and see you next time.